He's a man in a hurry. Is it too late to save the summit, Prime Minister? This summit is meant to end on Friday night, but by then, will there be something he can call success? Today, the former British minister, who's officially the COP president, was still trying to sound upbeat. There is a spirit of consensus. There is a spirit of cooperation. We need to see that spirit taken forward over the next few days. And I would like us to get to a point that we end with a um, ambitious outcome, which is what we wanted all along. One of the unusual characteristics at this summit, protesters and activists can come right inside. This is very much a flavour of what's going on at COP26 today. Boris Johnson would love to record some sort of success here, but that's very much in the balance. This climate scientist thinks the draft agreement released this morning has let too many countries off the hook. What we haven't been able to do, and it's not in the agreement, is pull those countries and make them more ambitious. And so that's the failing at the moment. We've got two days left and we need to get those countries on side to say, look, we're all going in the same direction, we're all decarbonising, but we've got to do it faster and at the same rate. So there's a lot for the Prime Minister to think about here, but there's a big distraction too. The Conservative former Attorney General Sir Geoffrey Cox has today issued a defiant statement saying that in earning hundreds of thousands of pounds as a lawyer while still an MP, he did nothing wrong. He says he'll cooperate with the parliamentary investigation, though, over his apparent use of his Commons office to do private work like this on a conference call. It's all awkward for those who have to defend him. Look, I don't want to get into any individual case. I don't know all the facts. Uh, what I do know is that, as a general rule, of course, any member of parliament, if they do have any external interests, they should fully declare them, be very open and transparent and follow all the rules at all times. And others worry the sleaze row has got in the way of what should be a big moment here. It is so frustrating when you sit in my position and you, you kind of see this event uh, almost kind of being bypassed because of a typical Westminster crisis. What happens in Glasgow could have a huge impact on all our futures. It is time for all the participants to focus, whatever the distractions. Well, Andy, the Prime Minister is addressing the conference right now. What's he been saying? Well, Sean, I think that he wants to talk about the COP summit. He's been saying that, the, in his words, the ball has been moved a long way down the pitch, but they've got to make an extra effort to get it over the line. But this issue about Geoffrey Cox and General Slees has kind of intruded, and I think has certainly distracted him to an extent, questions at the press conference that he's uh, handling at the moment about that sleaze, not about the COP summit. So he's had to say, for instance, that MPs who are found to have broken the rules should be investigated and punished. He's also talked about MPs having second jobs. This is what he's had to say on that. I just want to say the most important thing is those who break the rules must be investigated and should be punished. Uh, and on second jobs, I would say that uh, for hundreds of years, MPs have uh, gone to Parliament and, and also done work as, as doctors or lawyers or soldiers or firefighters. The UK population has understood that that has actually strengthened our democracy because people basically uh, feel that parliamentarians do need to have some experience of the world. But if that system is going to continue today, then it is crucial that MPs follow the rules. So Boris Johnson does want to concentrate here on the COP summit, but just one final thought. This summit will be over by the end of this weekend, but by next week he will have to return to London and I think we'll still be talking about sleaze and the standards kept by MPs.